Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old land sign? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll tak a cup o' oh, kindness yet for days of old lang syne. Happy New Year! Today, Aunt Molly and I are down at Forferloch enjoying a walk in the snow and we will enjoy showing you some pictures as we go round. Let's pray together. Loving God, who breaks through the darkness of doubt and despair, be with us this day as we hear again of the visit of the wise ones who risked everything to follow a star. Let us open our hearts be willing to risk receiving the gift of your gracious love that you have to offer us in the form of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, you know that we've looked at your manger bed adoringly and we've not always said or done things that have brought peace or love to others. Forgive us. Patient, Lord, you wait for us while we get nostalgic over the manger scene where our hearts are warmed by the witness of shepherds, their journey in the adoration of Magi, and we want to stay at that time and feel the glow of that love. But you call us to go from the manger, back to our fields, to our schools, to our homes, to our work, to places where the light seems to shine less brightly in the darkness. You pour your transforming love into our lives and we're challenged to bring back to all those places that good news of hope and salvation. So remind us again of all the opportunities we are given to celebrate your love and power and help us find joy in serving ours. This day, this year and forever. Amen. Let's sing together.
we hear from Scripture. Matthew chapter 2 After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. At this time of year, we usually hear the story of the wise men the three kings, the Magi, and I'm sure you all know the story. But we don't know if it's historically truth because actually there is little evidence from the time. But it is a story of truth in that it's a story that's here because of the truth it declares. And it's included by Matthew because it tells us something about those from outside of the Jewish faith who had an epiphany who recognised and worshipped the King of the Jews. If people from outside the faith could see, how much more could Matthew's Jewish congregation have an epiphany and recognise God in Christ?
we hear again from Scripture as the story of Christmas continues. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. The story of the Holy Innocents might not seem like a very happy New Year reading, but actually we're in the middle of the Christmas season. And things are dark and bleak and hard in our world, there are things that we just don't understand. And this story reminds us that evil never wins. That even when death and destruction and awful things happen, God will provide. God hears our cries. And it's never the end. It's always a beginning. The Gospel of Matthew is full of fulfilment language. The insertion of Egypt here is a reminder of its historic significance because Egypt was a land of security for Joseph, he of the technical dream coat. And it's a land of security for another Joseph centuries later. A pharaoh in Egypt feared Hebrew children then. Another imperial ruler's fear forces a child into Egypt later. And not only does the story after the birth of Jesus wind through Egypt, it's rooted in evil. And how ironic that the Jesus story of redemption, salvation and reconciliation must first wade through the abyss of egomaniacal behaviour and rich rulers playing God. Jesus, coming into the world, is bracketed with Herod, who fakes worship on one end while instituting infanticide on the other. And history repeats itself. Such atrocity had happened in Egypt before the Exodus. It had happened on the way to Egypt a millennium later. And its perpetual lesson reminds us that the most vulnerable suffer when the most powerful are irresponsible. And here, the most vulnerable, the most at risk, are the children. And Matthew here uses a passage from Jeremiah to connect the pain from children lost in wars with Assyria and Babylon to a similar anguish in, the, anguish in the writer's Bethlehem. Because Matthew's war is not nation against nation. It's the awful struggle between a despot and those desperately desiring political and spiritual change, release and relief. A mother's cry, a father's scream, come at the hands of imperial demand it was heartbreaking for the Hebrews and Moses reaching to Matthew's primarily Jewish audience, telling them, like us, that awful, awful things happen and that rich rulers can forget all too easily the horror they bring upon the least. That God knows, God cares, 
and God weeps alongside us, even when it feels like God is far from the situation. Three times a messenger from God, an angel, converses with the sleeping Joseph. First to tell him the, about the birth of Jesus. A second provides the way of escape. The third gives the all clear signal. And a fourth and final encounter tells Joseph that things are not to be safe. Don't return to Judea. Joseph surmises danger and acts accordingly. It is at this time the dream, instead of revealing something new, confirms what Joseph already knew, that when despots rule, humanity is never fully safe, nor protected from whatever might come next. So much of our media portrays places where black and brown bodies live as being lesser or unclean or uncivilised. Even in Scotland, communities when the folks are primarily of non-Scots descent are subject to awful racist slurs. And although there are many hues of Egyptians and African people in general, Egypt is still in Africa, always has been. It is the continent of these God-imaged, blessed black and brown people, the birthplace of civilization. And while there's no description of their complexion, we know that the feet of Mary, Joseph and Jesus touch Africa. Matthew goes so far as to suggest that had they non not gone to Egypt, they would have been killed. A Middle Eastern family, not white with blonde hair and blue eyes, finds shelter and sanctuary in a land we often decry. Before Jesus could reside in Nazareth, he takes refuge in Egypt. Our readings today remind us that it was followers of another faith from another country who travelled to worship the new king with precious gifts. And it was African men and women who opened their borders, their homes and their lives to save and support the refugees fleeing violence in the Middle East. God sends us angels, angels to open our eyes, show us the way and offer care, but they don't always have wings and they don't always look like we might expect. Amen. We sing again. For brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak God of the poor Friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. From cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share, peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green, Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain, God of the poor, friend of Compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come, 
change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravished earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, a future and dreams. Lord, and our madness, carelessness, greed, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. others. Our Lord, thank you for your epiphany, for revealing yourself in Jesus Christ and making known your love in the world, bringing light where there was darkness. We pray for this coming year and what it might mean for us as a community, a town, a nation, a world. And we pray for peace, justice and love to win. We pray that people in places of power administer their responsibilities correctly, remembering the weak before any others, having a bias for the poor, like Christ. We pray they listen and take note of the issues they should address and respond to the cries of help in our society. We pray as your church for our neighbouring families who have struggled over Christmas, perhaps due to being trapped in debt, or because of strange relationships that have broken up families, children neglected, elderly isolated. We pray for all who be been homeless, all who, like Jesus, have had to rush to escape. We pray for all who weep and mourn. We pray for all who are making new starts for whatever reason. And we bring to you now those who we know need your touch as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for worship. I'm so glad you could be with us on this New Year's Day to bring in a new year, a new future, a new start, a new hope with us at your side, traveling this journey alongside you, here to support you in all you face, here to journey with you wherever you go, and knowing that you are loved, loved by the God who made you and the church family that surrounds you. Have a very happy new year and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, those whom you pray for, those whom you struggle to love at times, this day and forevermore. Amen.